is, you know, resources have permitted us to open, you know, the Manika and regional office. Yeah. And then just to go back to the issue, yeah, uh, part of the reason why we are here, mm -hmm. he mentioned our presence in Shishawane, where we met Midland State University, and then in Mashaba, we met uh, Great Zimbabwe University, you know, media students, and then here in Mutara, we hope to be meeting with Africa University. So as you can see, the whole issue of curricula, uh, it's an area that means revisiting here. He spoke about uh, whether our graduates are fit for the Industry. For, for, for the industry that can only be ironed out and looked into by the practitioners themselves, the foot soldiers, you know, who are the practitioners, the ZMC and the academia, so that at least through these conversations, only then can we be able to come up with something that is going to serve you know, the Zimbabwean society in a holistic manner. Which brings us to the whole issue again of uh, uh, how the training institutions are developing the requisite skills that will make our graduates, our students fit into the industry. We are not focusing just on oh, the trust now given the development of digital media and the whole evolution of the media you know, industry itself. There is need for a new approach in terms of equipping, you know, the students, which is why it is critical, you know, in terms of coming up with the curricula, shape, shaping the curriculum. The whole idea of looking at the whole, you know, media value chain, not just to focus on, you know, journalism and what if you at the expense of the other you know, aspects of the media that will help the students or the candidates themselves to diversify even after, you know, they've completed their studies, including even starting up their own projects, not to wait for formal employment from the established you know, media houses and other, you know, players within the media sector. And like he has indicated, our presence in the different, you know, regions we have prioritized conversations and dialogue. Yes. And not to communicate via the phone, you know, from the head office, you know, in Harare or from the Zimbabwe Commission House in Harare. There's a difference, you know, between the way people speak to each other on the phone and the way we are actually interacting. That rapport is very critical. It is very important because we are not uh, operating in a vacuum. We are not an ivory tower. The commission is there for the people. For the people. So the commission has to come. <laughs> you know the saying, Mahomet, you know, the mountain coming to Mahomet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It shows the how much we value uh, uh, collective, you know, uh, ownership of programs that are, you know, uh, stemming from the media sector in our country. And in addition to that, it also helps us to bring holism, not just to pursue just one aspect, you know, of the media, one aspect of journalism. Uh, more so given the great youngest over here, the so-called citizen journalism, yeah. and the whole idea of professionalizing the industry. Yeah. I, I remember the other day, he was talking about citizen nurse, a citizen doctor, <laughs> which we can't have. Yeah. Which means it's the whole idea of you know, the media industry actually coming together and see how best we can safeguard you know, the profession and the industry to make it remain a reputable, you know, profession and a profession that is respectable in the best interest of the Zimbabwean citizen. Our programs are very much informed by the conversations we have with students. So we are here as the media uh, research, training and development subcommittee of the, the commission. Um, it's chaired by my colleague, uh, Commissioner Nguyen. Uh, you know, one thing that's coming through is the need now to establish a training hub. So the training hub is coming. How soon can we expect? Yeah, for me, colleagues, the training hub is coming. Uh, the purpose of this training hub 
is, is to not just to target uh, already practicing journalists. Uh, the directing executive sector was talking about uh, maps in professionalism, the need to adhere to ethical uh, journalism. Uh, that's the concern of this uh, training hub because we have received a lot of complaints uh, from stakeholders, you know, complaining about the conduct of some journalists. And it's within our power as the Commission to make sure that we don't just focus on the regulation side of things, but we also uh, focus on training capacitation. So that's what the training hub is going to uh, achieve. We are also concerned as a commission about you know, the lack of awareness by some journalists uh, and some media houses as well in terms of you know, the efforts which we have made. So we are trying to also you know, conscientize media houses and journalists about the policies which we have come up with. Yeah. Um, the Freedom of Information Act, for example, which the Commission administers. It's a very critical you know, piece of legislation which is not being fully used, especially by our journalists, because it's supposed to allow them to you know, do a factual check, facts-based reporting. Journalism is respected if it follows facts, but if it now relies on rumors, and uh, bad talk, I always say, when people just talk and, but as a journalist, uh, the Freedom of Information Act is there to assist you, get deeper, get information, it is what timelines, if it's a matter of life or death, it gives whoever you request information from 48 hours to give you that information, and then all this other information you can get it probably within three weeks, that's the maximum, so failure to get that information is presumed to have been a denial of your request. So I think that's very critical for the media to also play its part. And I'm happy that we are here in Manika Land. I'm sure as journalists you can also write about it. Not only that, we also have a sexual harassment, the media, Zimbabwe media, sexual harassment, um, and sexual violence. <laughs> policy. Are you aware of that? Yeah. So all those are studies which the Commission is making to ensure there is a safe, safe working environment for journalists. And here, when we talk of sexual harassment, we are not talking of only females. Uh, the males are also being harassed as well. So I think it's important for the media to really carry out that. But it's important, you know, as a Commission, to get the views of the various stakeholders. And these visits are helping us, um, particularly on the issue of sustainability. It's a very key. We, for this slide, we started with the uh, research, uh, meeting uh, education institutions, offering uh, studies in media and journalism. Then we went to Mashingo, and we, now today we are in Tari. Basically, we wanted to interact with the uh, stakeholders to understand the issues they are facing, which, 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 which issues they, they, they are facing, the affecting, the, yeah. affecting the industry, so that uh, we can make the way forward together. Mm -hmm. As you might also note, there are a number of challenges and uh, dynamics shaping the industry today. And as you may be aware, there are even if possible from government level to say let's revisit the legal instruments to make the industry move forward, to further liberalize the industry, mm -hmm. to empower media houses so that they remain sustainable. Mm -hmm. Particularly in the face of challenges being broken by competition from digital media. Mm -hmm. And also to, to reinforce the need for the profession to stick to professionalism. Mm. We the call is let's respect the ethical the ethics of the profession because Zimbabweans are looking at us for objective, truthful and fair knowledge and information. That information which can help them be part of the movement in terms of the achievement of vision 2030.
how can they be useful citizens? They need the information. They need to know what is happening. So you find out that you have been meeting various stakeholders and you will end up today with at uh, Africa University to discuss even how the curriculum, the graduates who are coming out of there, how are they going to fit into this new system? What value are they bringing to the industry? And are they fit for purpose in terms of the achievement of national goals and objectives? Yeah, just, just to reiterate a point that uh, our acting executive secretary, Vajna Mwara, has raised the issue of the sustainability of community media. Um, uh, part of the reason why we are moving around throughout the country, meeting with uh, uh, community media, um, is to understand the challenges that they are facing and what sort of support we can give from a policy perspective, from a policy standpoint, to community media. Community media plays an important role uh, in promoting development. It's a key catalyst in development. So it's one of um, the issues that we are seized with. We are good to talk about community media, how can we support it you know, in the face of economic challenges. Looking at the political economy, uh, community media is uh, having serious challenges. Um, but it raises a whole lot of other issues to say um, what form of community media can we have in the country. If we stick to the now um, definition of what constitutes community media, we will certainly go into challenges because the volunteers are not there. Um, they are having to deal with uh, issues of bread and butter on a day-to-day basis. Uh, and you can't go there, you know, expect them to go and, you know, um, uh, do uh, stuff to, 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 you know, community media when they are able to grapple with the bread and butter issues. So that's one aspect. But that aspect is to say, um, how can we bring closer to the people the services of the Commission? Uh, in line with uh, uh, the government mantra and thrust of uh, devolution. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that it took us eight months, like you have pointed out. Um, but uh, I want to uh, inform you that uh, the Commission is very deliberate in its approach right now to say we need to make sure that people in the regions do benefit from our services and that our services are easily accessible to them. Uh, we have established an office in Blaue to cater for multi-building north, multi-building south, and Blaue provinces. Plans are afoot to establish offices here in Manikaland, uh, and an office in Mashingo, then an office either in Kwekwe or Gweru to cater for the Midlands provinces for now, until we cover the whole country, until we have the physical presence throughout the country in line with the government thrust of equal development. No place, uh, no one should be left behind. So I think, um, and also to add to this point to say, we just want to understand the state of affairs within the media landscape and uh, what issues need improvement. Because there is, there is ongoing, there are ongoing media reforms. These media reforms must be, um, um, what can we say, must be informed by what's obtaining on the ground to address the issues that have come from um, um, the stakeholders. And yeah, before I come to you, uh, when can we expect the Manikaland uh, office to uh, According to the calendar, right, uh, we were thinking in the next financial year. Um, uh, if I may come in yes. today, no to just do as we please. You you get what I'm saying? So we must protect the you know sanctity of the profession of journalism. Mm -hmm. It's not easy because you know journalism involves information and some people the constitution put it as a human right that you get information, you can say whatever you want. But again, there should be some limitations into how people can do things. You cannot go about shouting at people and say, it's my freedom of expression and whatever. Mm. So there are a lot of issues, but again, it goes to the core of 
is part of you know, a human right, freedom of information, access to information, and expression as well. So it then creates that contested field where you discover that, you know, we now have a lot of activists and whatever, all saying, you know, I, I, it's my right to say that I have no crime. We have had a lot of people who have been arrested and then after being taken into court because you say they don't have any case. It's not because of anything, it's because of the unique nature of you know, uh, freedom of expression and information. It's a very critical field where there's a very thin line where people will say, no, you are now must be our rights by saying we shouldn't, you know. So governments all over the world, they are grappling to say, how do we control the, the fifth estate? You guys know about the fourth estate. There is now the fifth estate. Social media and wife. How are governments going to control that? If somebody maligns your character and says a lot of things, and they are just, you know, on social media, how do you... Sometimes you, somebody is in the UK, but is talking about things happening in Zimbabwe. How do you get any redress in life? So it's food for thought and uh, we have uh, observed that it's not only in Zimbabwe. Okay. Governments throughout the world. As, you know, most people don't want to work as volunteers, dwindling advertising um, uh, resources, right? Yes. Um, um, but we are encouraging community media to think outside the box. But some, uh, yeah, uh, and to forge uh, partnerships with uh, local businesses and uh, um, and to make local or community businesses understand the importance of their work uh, and how they can forge uh, partnerships. Um, forging partnerships, not just with business, but also, uh, <clears throat> you know, other public uh, entities that are locally, you know, um, in those areas where community media is operating, like uh, you have got your local authorities, and to come up with these partnerships so that they remain afloat, so that they get revenue to get, to, which would keep them going. Uh, so this is part of the, uh, it's related to the political economy and we can't run away from the situation. Uh, we just have to tackle, you know, uh, and this is one way of doing it. Uh, instead of relying on donors, uh, relying on, um, you know, <laughs> let's, they need to think outside the box. Uh, that's what we are saying, uh, to also uh, consider local businesses, consider, because these businesses do operate in these communities. And, um, you know, they benefit from local resources. Uh, but also, uh, if community media comes on board, you know, approaches these businesses, they can forge uh, partnerships which are beneficial uh, also to the community and generate employment. Uh, uh, bring money into the community media, you know, uh, business, uh, which would uh, make them you know, make community media viable, so that it can stay afloat. Uh, the main challenge, the main challenge uh, facing community media, the environment is great. Journalists can go out there and gather news, but the challenge is financial resources. Mm -hmm. People cannot continue to come to work uh, on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are given a lot. I will not mention names. There is one community media where people have been coming to work, coming to work, coming to work as volunteers. That's okay. They are getting skills there, but they also have got families to feed, isn't it? Um, so these are things. So we are. Um, uh, aging media executives, aging business um, uh, executives to find each other. You know, those that are operating in these areas where community media is present. 
Yeah. And uh, can you so just to summarize the conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> the conclusion. <laughs> It's just really all I do of diversifying. Yeah, the you know, and not to remain rigid. Yeah. Uh, we are depending on the press, press, press. When you know that, you know, the print house, uh, the yeah. distribution is print mm. it's almost, mm. you know, coming to that's an important point. You see, yeah. so the whole idea of yeah. diversifying taking advantage of digital space. Yes. So this yes. is your media. Mm. And also because you have those other skills that is so cool citizen journalists do not have or obviously the people favor you know your your channel or your site yeah. rather than you know running with the stories from mm -hmm. the so-called uh, citizen you know, journalists yeah. and uh, diversifying in terms of uh, pursuing other areas you know in terms of you know offering services because you're not just focusing on offering a service in running with a story, mm -hmm. but there are other ways by which you can package and network with those who are in the communities, like he has, uh, he has actually said. Yes. I will not mention how, mm -hmm. because each you know publishing house mm -hmm. they have their own, they can, can I say, trade secrets, which we cannot publicize mm -hmm. on a public platform. Yeah. For the sake of protecting, you know, their niches and their interests. Niches so and it interest, is yeah. niches and interests. So yeah. the short of it, the long and short of it is diversification. Diversification within the media value chain, yeah. and we leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. So, Madam Chair, just to add to your important 